So the MSRP for this headset is $199.95 USD. Right now you can probably find it for around 160 to 170 online depending on the site and time of year. It sits kind of comfortably between something like a HyperX Cloud 2 and the Sennheiser Game Zero 2s. There is a closed back variation of this headset with all of the same accessories but slightly different drivers and obviously a different sound signature. In terms of compatibility on the box it says PC and PS4, but if you have one of the new updated Xbox One wireless controllers you'll be able to utilize this headset with that out of the box. Alternatively if you have a Xbox One wireless controller adapter you'll also be able to utilize it. On top of that you also get some functionality with smart devices and that comes via one of the two included cables that attach to the headset. First of all we've got a one meter smartphone cable. This is an included mic and volume slider. Then we've got a one 1.2 meter gooseneck mic headset. This is a great length for connecting to a controller which might kind of sit in your lap area. It also includes a inline mute and volume control. Both of these cables end in a 4 pole 3.5 millimeter jack. Also included is a 2 meter PC extension which splits out a separate mic and audio connector from the 4 pole. All the cables are pretty thick and made of a fairly stiff rubber material. In terms of aesthetics these only come in one color option that's going to be this black steel and red combo. A little flashy but fairly subdued compared to a lot of other gaming headsets on the market. I really like them, they kind of match the colors of my channel art and branding if you hadn't noticed that. The PG-1 closed back variations are even more subdued black with some gold accents. More color options from Audio-Technica would be nice, but this is still a fairly young product sector for them. I feel like it's understandable not going crazy with colors. In terms of size and weight, they're fairly small, especially compared to my ATH-8700Xs, which are an open back pair of headphones. They're fairly similarly sized to a lot of Turtle Beach headsets. These guys are fairly light coming in at 225 grams without the cable attack, so we'll see how that plays into the comfort. Looking at the build quality and materials, it's constructed mainly of plastic with metal headband expanders. Given in a structure, I was happy to see and hear that they don't exhibit any of those kind of nasty plasticky creakiness you often see with less expensive headphones. The headband seems to have a nice metal reinforcement between the leather at top which has Audio Technica branding on the top of it, underneath of which is some foam pad covered in a breathable red mesh. The actual enclosures are mostly plastic with red highlights and a gray mesh which of course makes these an open back headset. The ear pads are covered in a nice black velour with mesh inside covering the drivers. The velour is typical for open back headphones and headsets. They let your ears breathe at the expense of not having as nice of a seal for base. The pillowy padding material is nice and plush. They give a lot but allow for enough clearance that my giant ears don't rub up against the insides of the cups. In terms of articulation, these have some of the articulation that you might expect from something like the M50Xs or M50s and in other ways they don't. The cups invert into kind of a DJ style but they don't pivot out a lot. They've actually got this clever little bow tie pivot joint which should offer enough articulation to help them fit comfortably on most head configurations. These don't feel as good in the hand as my ATH-8700Xs. I wouldn't throw them against the ground and expect them to live, but put it on a stand and don't trip over the cable and they should last a long time. In terms of comfort, the clamping force is absolutely perfect for my head size. I wear about a 7.5 size hat if that helps you at all. And it's just enough for this light of a headset. Combined with the padding on the headband and the ear cups, these are really comfortable for long playing sessions. Now getting into the sound signature. These are sporting some fairly large 40 millimeter drivers. Their frequency range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with an impedance of 39 ohms, which means you can drive these easily from a mobile device. In terms of the sound stage, it's probably the best I've heard out of any headset that I've tried. Much better than the M50Xs, which are closed back, so that's to be expected, but not quite as nice as the 8700Xs I've been using for gaming for quite a while. Pinpointing some of the spots on the frequency response, the sub bass is surprisingly present for an open back headset. It's not going to shake your head nearly as much as the M50Xs, but the presence of sub bass does help back up the lows, which are noticeably more prevalent than on my 8700Xs, which have been described as baseless by many. The mids and highs are very nice and don't get overshadowed by the bass, which is a problem that a lot of headsets face. For gaming, footsteps and bullet whizzes come through great in games like Rainbow Six Siege and Battlefield 4. Playing Black Ops 3, I was really able to localize things like wall running and double jumps with the little rocket boosters to help me get the drop on enemies that much easier. 
In terms of music and movies, it performed pretty admirably too. I really liked how much the bass came through when listening to EDM, but at the same time, the mids and vocals always came through really well. This is just absolutely one of the best balanced headsets I've ever listened to. They're able to get uncomfortably loud without absolutely falling apart when using audiophile grade DACs and amps like the Creative Sound Blaster X7 and the JDS Labs O2 plus ODAC combo. I have a review coming on that soon, but those DACs and amps are meant for higher impedance audiophile grade headphones and they can actually still help out some low impedance hands like these. In terms of the mic, the quality is pretty damn good, better than a lot of other headsets I've used. Here is an audio test right now. This is a test of the Audio-Technica ATH-PDG-1 gooseneck microphone running straight into the microphone input on my computer with no effects whatsoever. In terms of adjustability, the gooseneck is able to kind of flex up out of your way, but again, it being an open back headset, it's not the most portable, it doesn't really collapse and go into a bag or anything like that. So the verdict, this is really one of the best headsets I've had the pleasure of using. And I've used everything from $35 cheapos to $300 Astro A50s. The sound quality and soundstage are amazing. They aren't as good in terms of localizing sounds as something like the 8700Xs, but these do have some great features like the swappable cables and the built-in high quality mic. Again, these aren't the best if you want something that can double for a portable travel headphone unless you're like forcing everyone around you to listen to whatever you're listening to. But if you value accurate but fun gaming sound more so than all around this and these are in your price range, I can definitely say that I can recommend these for you. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a little bit. Let me know what you think of this headset in the comments below. Also, give me any feedback you have on the video. Got some other headset reviews coming up like the Cloud 2s from HyperX. Let me know if you guys want to see any other headsets on the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. I've also got some PC builds and modding going on. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Follow me on your favorite social media site. I've got my Amazon affiliate link in the description below if you use it to pick up your next pair of headphones or a headset. It gives me a small kickback. It doesn't cost you guys anything. You help out the channel a ton. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.